Um, welcome everybody for, for coming and um, it's a very special day. Uh, as you know, um, in the last couple of years we've gone through virtual, we've gone through hybrid and I think today we are really normal. I miss, I miss the full house. I, I don't mean a full house in, 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 a, in a virtual sense. Uh, a full house means a house packed with people. I miss the noise. And so, um, uh, to me, this is not back to normal. This is better than normal. So, so um, uh, thank you for making me a happy man this morning. And uh, uh, I welcome you to come back again next year. Now, uh, this morning, uh, as MC has um, introduced, we have a very special guest. Uh, we have the Secretary uh, for Financial Services and the Treasury, uh, Mr. Christopher Hui, and he uh, joined us today very specifically to introduce um, something that has been uh, planning for some time, which is a, a roadmap. Now, um, and also we need to um, emphasize that he made this particular endeavor a lot more difficult than it could be because he just recovered from COVID. So, <laughs> so he, is, he is, I think, also better than normal. So I think he, he, he went through that process. I think this is probably the first day that he sort of um, finished the isolation. So uh, that, I think that proves <clears> to um, uh, everybody that um, uh, the secretary accords a great deal of importance to the insurance industry uh, by physically being here with us straight after his, his um, uh, quarantine and isolation period. Now, um, Chris, if I may, uh, shall, I, shall I kick off? Um, we don't have much time, but um, let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's be brief. I've, I've, been, I've, I've, I've um, just explained that we've gone through a tough um, three years, and uh, uh, we're now you know, better than normal, and um, you have, uh, I think, um, just um, made a good idea of publishing a roadmap, which I think takes stock of what we have um, uh, been planning and achieved uh, over the past couple of years, and you also envisioned a, a few prospects for the industry. May I uh, open by um, uh, inviting you to give us a bit of um, sharing on this roadmap, please. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, Clement, for uh, sharing some of my personal details. <laughs> uh, um, I think there are two key drivers that uh, motivate us to do this roadmap with the IA and industry. I think number one is a global trend. As you can see, uh, COVID and among others do make people see risk in a rather different light. Like personally, as you highlighted, I just came back from uh, recovering from COVID. I think a lot of things that we envisaged previously as highly unlikely do happen. And at the same time, even for these highly unlikely events, if they do happen, the risk can be enormous. And I would say, in this context, basically, it presents enormous opportunities for insurance. Because every time when there's an opportunity, there's a crisis, that's exactly where the role of insurance can play and also can get a better role here. That's number one. And number two, I would say, uh, in terms of the uh, broader context of the reappreciation of risk, uh, as all of you can imagine, there are all sorts of animals being named, like uh, black swans, like uh, grey rhinos, so on and so forth. And I think all these really illustrate how people really see risk in a different light and how prepared they are to really uh, have a more sophistication in terms of how they can better mismanage all these kind of events. And previously, as far as Hong Kong is concerned, I think also a lot in terms of many businesses are concerned, there's a lot of emphasis on um, just in time. There's always an optimization angle in terms of what we do. But now, apart from just in time, we also have to look at just in case. If things happen, what we should do. And these global trends, in fact, I must say, present enormous opportunities for this sector. And that's number one in terms of key driver why we want to do this roadmap. And number two, in terms of uh, the driver to, for us to do this roadmap with the IA, is a more regional or more national or local one in terms of what role Hong Kong can play in the due circulation of the country, as highlighted by Mr. Fu and also by Stephen just now. When we talk about due circulation, of course, there are two domestic and international. And that's exactly where Hong Kong can play a bigger role. Because to me, Hong Kong is the, is the, is the converging point of these two circulations. Uh, for the domestic one, the EC or the natural entry will be GBA, 
we talk a lot about the after service centers and also other types of initiatives. But I think one thing is important is that as we try to connect more deeply into GBA or to build more connectivity with this region across different cities, you can see that as people move, as businesses move, there's greater need for insurance products. And that's also the point that just now alluded to by Stephen, the chairman, regarding how closely insurance is related to everybody's daily lives. And imagine, like for example, for an entrepreneur, like from Hong Kong, if you have your business or tech business in Shenzhen or other cities, if there are more and more cross-boundary insurance products in terms of health, in terms of how you manage your car, so on and so forth, it's being made available. Your accessibility and connectivity within this part of the world will be enormous. And that, again, will generate enormous economic value and also facilitate mobility of people, resources, capital across the region. So this is the domestic circulation bit. And for the international circulation bit, um, as all of you can imagine, Hong Kong is already an IFC. And even just now, Stephen mentioned about Hong Kong is back. But to me, Hong Kong has never gone. We are always here. And even at a time which is most difficult during COVID and even during the riots, our financial markets has been hugely resilient. And it's always on my mind in terms of how we can bring these connectivities and synergies between our capital markets and insurance sector including, of course, welcoming many of the global insurers to list in Hong Kong or to do secondary fundraising here, and at the same time to encourage more of them to headquarter here in Hong Kong and subject to your group-wide supervision. I think all these are in the national angle that we should focus on. That's the international circulation bit. And another bit I want to highlight is not about international companies coming here, but about the, our companies from China coming to Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong boasts a whole array of insurers, reinsurers, and advisors, which are best positioned to facilitate many of our mainland companies, in particular the SOEs, to manage the various project risks in the Belt and Road region. And Hong Kong is, in fact, perfectly placed to do that. And so in terms of this international circulation, you will see two flows. One is the national company coming here, and another is the mainland company coming out using Hong Kong as a platform. I think all these are very clear and also very strong narrative for us to share with the rest of the world, to, together with the industry. And that's why, against this backdrop of having this global trend of risk reappreciation and also this new circulation of strategy of our own country with Hong Kong being, playing a key role, that's why we put together this roadmap. Right. Now, um, I pick up a couple of points. I, and I, I, I would just perhaps just summarize it. Um, the secretary mentioned about the fact that it's going to be mutually beneficial. So it's, it's not just uh, benefiting either the um, mainland side, but it also brings benefit into Hong Kong as well. He also emphasized about the fact that a lot of things that um, we, we, are, we are planning to do are not just catering for mainland enterprises, it's also catered for overseas corporations. Um, uh, we, we understand that Hong Kong seeks to be a hub, and a, a hub cannot be 180 degrees, so it has to be 360. Um, now, uh, that leads me um, uh, to my very curious second question, which I think, shall we go a bit deeper? Because, um, Chris, you just now, you mentioned about the overarching uh, strategy. Uh, when we start talking about dual circulation, of course, there are two loops. Um, we, 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 let's look at the international loop. Um, we, um, we talked about um, the GWS, and in fact, uh, apart from GWS, um, we also have, uh, well, the government has also done a lot to boost Hong Kong's role as a risk management center through different legislative changes, um, plus um, uh, taxation incentives. Um, can, I, can I ask you, um, now that we have completed uh, what we've done, what do you think we should do to bring us to the next level? in terms of the international loop? Mm. Um, I think number one is definitely to really to highlight to the rest of the world in terms of um, what we have done, including, of course, the regulatory framework for global supervision, and also a lot of the tax concessions that we have provided for, for general insurance, and also a lot of support measures that we have put together, including those through IA, to grow the industry. I think we need to share this more with the rest of the world in such a way that they know how much importance we attach to this sector. Uh, riding on, for example, um, the, um, my recent visit to um, Manila and also to the, uh, to the uh, Bangkok, basically to, first of all, attend the uh, Asia Development Bank meetings and also the APEC meetings. 
Um, what I would say is that a lot of the key takeaways are very much in line with what we just discussed. First of all, there's much focus on decarbonization. Because the whole world, in particular, many of the developing countries in this part of the world are subject to different types of risk. Like those uh, near the shore, who will be subject to the uh, water level coming up, and those in the earthquake prone areas are subject to different types of natural disasters. And that's exactly where insurance can play a great key role. And, and another key topic that's being discussed among these multilateral forums, about, apart from decarbonization, is to how to deal with it. And there's a key theme being developed there is regarding uh, the crowding in of investment, private investment. It's not about crowding out, it's about crowding in. I.e., try to mobilize uh, private capital and deploy them in a way that we can help solve all these kind of social economic risks together with the rest of the world, as highlighted by uh, the chairman's speech just now. And that's exactly, I would say, Hong Kong has to play a key role. Like, for example, the uh, insurance linked securities that we have developed as a framework, and also the IA has competently put together a streamlined process for approval. Um, so far, we've got two, but I'm sure more to come, as highlighted by the chairman. And also, if you look at more detail of these transaction details, the most recent one is actually insuring against the risk of catastrophe in Japan. And it's about mobilizing international capital and also use Hong Kong as a platform to insure those risks. And in fact, these are exactly the stories that we need to share more. And also, these are exactly the success stories, I would say, that many of these multilateral organizations like ADB, APEC, or many of the government meetings I attended to, they want to know. Because um, you can't really rely enormously or solely on government resources, on public resources, to deal with these ESG or climate issues. And we need to mobilize private capital more. And insurance as a means to optimize um, resource allocation is exactly one way to go. Now, I think the Secretary has, again, given us a couple of messages. First, he is going out and telling good stories. So if you feel that there are part of his stories which is missing, I think we should write to him or we should approach him to make sure that he can fill in <clears> the gaps and tell everybody, as I said, a better story. Second, um, I think for those who are not in life insurance, I think you've heard some music in your ears. Um, the secretary just now talked about how to deal with catastrophes. He's talking about how to mobilize private capital together with public um, resources to try to cope with changes and risks on the horizon. Now, uh, as everybody knows, uh, we've got a market which is dominant by life insurance. It's 9 to 1. Um, it, it is not necessarily the best mix. Uh, we know that other insurance hubs uh, have very different uh, proportion of business. So I believe what the Secretary just said, I think, also point us uh, into a very clear direction that when the government mobilized the campaign of competing for enterprises, um, the government is not just uh, looking at what we have, it's looking at what we should have. So um, um, I, for those of you who are in reinsurance and property and casualty insurance, um, I will urge you to um, speak up through the Federation or, or through the Bureau or directly to the Secretary about what Hong Kong can do more in this particular uh, area. Now, um, Chris, um, if I may, since uh, uh, we, we have used up uh, half the time, I'll move to um, the other loop, which is domestic circulation. You mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned about Hong Kong's role. Uh, I believe that our role is supposed to be a promoter in terms of the domestic loop, and you talk about different innovative products. You talk about the um, flow of people, capital, goods, and information. Uh, can you, can you um, tell us a little bit more about um, what um, else the government is doing um, to enhance connectivity and what the insurance industry um, could actually help you in terms of uh, realizing your vision? Mm -hmm. um, if you try to look at the, uh, our roadmap just uh, announced more deeply, uh, at the end, we highlight four enablers where we see uh, the drivers to grow this industry further. And number one, of course, is connectivity with the mainland, as you highlighted, GBA. And another is about tech. And the third is about talent. And the final bit is about data. And to me, I would say data actually key, play, key, play a key role in terms of how we can foster connectivity with the GBA. And in particular, foster the connectivity, as I highlighted, as the first enabler of the industry. Um, because as we 
try to implement the after self service centers as we try to also to get more of our GBA people or citizens to come to Hong Kong to ensure or to subscribe to our insurance services, we will get more and more data of their background, of their health situation, and also their personal information. And of course, subject to their consent and also willingness, this is uh, actually a wealth in terms of how we can build on this data to enhance our product portfolio and also try to innovate in terms of trying to bring new products. And that's why I would say I definitely encourage and also writing on your call to the industry in terms of what are the areas that you see in terms of how we can further build connectivity in terms of cross-boundary data flow across the GBA in such a way that we can facilitate these product innovation. Because after all, um, to me, science is really a science about numbers. The more numbers we get, the more data sets we get, but the more accurate we can appraise the risk and also attach a price premium. And in that regard, we really need to have the need to broaden our clientele and broaden our market catch. And GBA is exactly the right starting point. And again, this backdrop, data underlines a lot of these product innovations. And I definitely encourage the industry to work with us and the regulator to see if there's any innovative ideas in terms of how we can facilitate this cross-boundary data flow in the broader context of developing more products which suit the needs of people in the GBA. Well, I urge you guys to be a bit patient because the policy about the roadmap is not yet out in the public, but uh, it's going to be released today, if I'm not wrong, uh, Secretary. Yeah. Now, um, in, yeah. that, in that yeah. roadmap, uh, you will be- Secretary said that it's out, out already. Oh, it's out now, <laughs> okay, now. Um, you're not supposed to, to read it now. You're supposed to <laughs> listen to me. But um, yeah. anyway, if you do uh, take yeah. a bit of time uh, to read it, you, you see what the secretary was alluding to. Um, there are um, a lot of in initiatives um, being um, described, but there are four enabling sectors towards the end. Uh, he actually described it himself, now talent, technology, data, and connectivity. Now, these enablers are important because they're holistic, and secondly, it doesn't just impact on the insurance industry, it impacts on the entire Hong Kong. In fact, if we don't do the four enabling factors correctly, I do not believe any sector could benefit. So um, uh, his call is um, to, um, I, I think, not just the insurance sector, but the insurance sector certainly will be able to contribute. But since I've stolen, well, I've lost my pen. I, just since I've stolen a few minutes, I want to be a bit more greedy. Now, um, people here, must be thinking about what about the after-sales service centre? What about the Insurance Connect? Now, I can tell you that the Secretary has um, uh, taken his um, heart on this, and uh, he has, in fact, um, recently had a telephone conversation, a, a video, a virtual con a conference with CBRC uh, just to pursue um, this particular endeavour. So, Chris, if I may uh, be a bit more greedy, a bit more daring, and ask you, what's the, um, your, your expectations on mm -hmm. this? Um, I must say, I've been under tremendous pressure from the industry <laughs> uh, to do this. And, but I, I think it's also good for the industry as well, for Hong yes, Kong, yes. that we have all these uh, other self-service centers uh, in the mainland uh, serving people with insurance policy here in Hong Kong from, with our insurers. And as you highlighted, we have been closely uh, working and also liaising with our mainland regulators and to see how we can expedite that. And uh, from my observation, and I'm sure you also see those uh, uh, meetings and witness them uh, firsthand, is that I think progress is being made. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we are getting more and more detailed into what it should be. So I would say um, progress is uh, being made, but at the same time, to make sure that I'm re I will be invited here next year, uh, I'll save more late, late later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, um, I think I can testify. Everything they said, including feeling the pressure, is absolutely accurate. <laughs> so, um, so, but all, all, I'm also the kind of person who feels that the right kind of pressure will provide impetus. So uh, let's keep the pressure on, um, both to us and to uh, our counterparts. Now, um, um, before we close, we have a bit of time. I just want to perhaps also add on a little bit. On the domestic loop, I think apart from uh, what um, the Secretary has just said, 
The IA is also doing a, a couple of things which you probably have noticed. Uh, we do it mainly for the local community. For example, we have done a lot of product innovation recently, thanks to the government's um, uh, generosity. We have got tax uh, deductible products out in the open. Uh, we've got um, the, uh, uh, the QDEP, the Qualified Deferred Annuity Plan, and we've got the VHIS, the Voluntary Health Insurance Scheme. Now, both are proved to be extremely popular. And I think the, the statistics uh, prove that those products are in fact being used by people, not just for tax deduction purpose, but actually for mitigating risk. For example, in terms of the uh, QDEP, uh, the Deferred annu uh, uh, Annuity Plan, we're talking about people buying well above the tax deductible amount. Uh, they are buying at $71,000, which is way above $60,000, which is the tax deductible limit. And the, um, and the age, uh, average age with which, uh, at which they brought those policies are about 47 years, which again, um, we want it to be younger, but I think it's, it's a very good indicator that it is working. So um, uh, we, we, we have now testing um, the new um, uh, uh, protected link plan, and we are also doing a GBA mortality table with our counterparts uh, in the mainland. Now, we do all this not just to help rebalance the uh, local market, because I talked about the 9 to 1. Uh, I didn't talk about the fact that we are selling more insurance than protection. Now that you've heard um, just now Mr. Liu, he said in Chinese, the surname of insurance is protection. So, so we are trying to do all these, but I need to throw in one, one bit is that when we do all these, we do it with a view to having those products crossing the border if the timing is right. Uh, if we have uh, the infrastructure, which is, for example, the mortality table, um, the data connectivity, uh, sorry, the data uh, exchangeability uh, that um, uh, the secretary has talked about, a lot of this product could potentially be modified and used um, across in the GBA, given the, the, the affinity and given the similar um, uh, um, uh, way of life and the similar cultural uh, linkages, I believe that we could also be a very good testing ground for innovative products. Um, so I, I just want to add this point so, so we, we know that we're not just looking at connectivity per se, we're also looking at preparation in Hong Kong, which benefits Hong Kong itself, and ultimately it could benefit GBA as a whole. Now I'll come to the final uh, question, um, uh, uh, Chris, if I may. Uh, green finance and uh, fintech. Now, uh, these are buzzwords, um, but um, can you just give us a bit of guidance about how the industry could capitalize uh, on these um, areas, emerging areas, but yet uh, avoid pitfalls? Mm -hmm. um, I think these are not buzzwords. They are, they are indeed um, work in progress or in action. I think one illustration is the earlier um, the Bureau has a uh, proof of concept subsidy program with Subaport. So we basically sponsor um, collaboration between established financial institutions, of course, including insurers, with our, uh, one of those in our 800 fintech companies in Hong Kong to foster innovation. And the result has been very good. So far, we have achieved a uh, commercialization rate of more than 70%. Mm. Uh, in many of the projects that are being granted subsidies, once they gone through the proof of concept stage, many of those innovations actually stay with the, within those FIs. And when I look at the uh, more than about like 90 of those projects being approved, in fact, 20 are from this insurance sector. And it's quite pleasing in terms of how innovative uh, this sector has proven to be. Like, for example, one innovation, I don't want to go into details because it may run into some of the commercial sensitivity <laughs> of the innovator, uh, but that is about really streamlining the claiming process of um, health insurance. Mm. Like just now, I didn't go to hospital, of course, fortunately, but if, imagine if I was in hospital, I need to make claims, I'm sure that you have similar experience. It's tremendously painful. So somehow you get- Yeah, painful, that's the word. Yeah, exactly. You get information from the doctor, and then the doctor, and then you pass it to the insurer, and the insurer will come back and say, uh, please add something else. And I must say, I don't know what to be added because I can't really what, what, don't know either what's being written in a doctor's letter in the first place, and I don't know what's being needed by the insurer. And that's, in fact, there's a, an innovation being developed in terms of how they can foster this streamlining of process. Once the doctor or the medical organization has the information out, they can be sent directly 
to the insurer for processing. So it's, in fact, it will be um, a lot of uh, hassle reduction on the part of the patients. And another uh, fintech uh, um, innovation that I come across, which also cross over with green, is uh, regarding how the uh, insurer can better incentivize corporates to adopt better ESG practices for its employees. Because I'm sure that many of these insurers, they do sell their corporate insurance products to the different corporations for their employees, and they have a scorecard. So once the employees are like subject to better ESG practices, whatever, so presumably they should be healthier. So the insurer will be more willing to subject them to a lower premium. So I think all these actually foster a very positive virtuous cycle in terms of how we can use green, how we can use tech, and also use insurance as the means to really make the world better. Right, now um, perhaps I can also share a little bit um, of our own um, uh, experience. Um, in fact, um, we have launched uh, the InsurTech uh, sandbox uh, three years ago, and uh, I think we have, we have a reasonable usage, but we never realized that in fact uh, the pandemic became the turbo booster. So um, we have a, a, a very, very big surge of interest. And um, I think um, the, uh, the point um, that uh, the secretary made about the, uh, um, the uh, claims is actually quite an interesting point. Um, so two thirds of our, uh, of our trial projects, I think 23, 22 out of 23, they are on virtual onboarding. But not many are those uh, which focus on what the secretary said, which is to resolve the pain points. Um, I believe that um, uh, after this particular search, when everybody is scrambling to try to get to the customers without actually having to do physical interaction, I think the industry should look more into how to use technology to try to resolve um, and enhance the way they deliver the service. Now, the, the point about claim, I'm sure that 50% is the doctor's problem, problem right? But um, we, we share half of it um, at the most. But anyway, uh, but if you look at the complaints that we have uh, in the insurance industry, um, and in fact, it's a pain point for the IA itself because we are not empowered by law to deal with claim disputes. We are empowered by law to penalize you people for misconducts. But when it comes to claims, it is difficult, and, um, and this actually creates a lot of animosity between the customers and the industry, which is not good for our image, not good for business, and not good for the insured. So I believe that InsurTech has a place in, in this. And in some, finally, in terms of um, green finance, um, I, I believe that um, we insurers in this room will know very well that uh, we have a multiple role to play. We have role to play to make um, disclosure better. We have role to play to enhance and open up new sources and uh, better quality data, which ultimately assist um, the um, other industry, including, for example, the banks, to try to gauge and devise solutions to mitigate climate risk. And for ourselves, we can use those data to produce more products, which again is mutually beneficial both to the community and the industry. So um, um, all this, I think, is happening. And uh, Chris, if I may, um, what do you look forward um, in year 2024 in terms of the things that we've described? Have you uh, got yourself any KPIs on, on all these areas? <laughs> The chief executive will be here in no time, so yes. uh, you can. <laughs> we have 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, maybe I will end uh, with, uh, just that I quote a number of animals, right? Black swan, gray rhino, and next year we'll eat the rabbit, right? So I think a rabbit normally are very alert and also very agile. That's exactly what Hong Kong has been and what we should continue to be. Yeah, mm. no, no wonder I'm an ox. But anyway, <laughs> now, um, I think we're, we're out of time, so let me wrap up by urging you guys to download a copy of the roadmap, read it, and pay attention to the four enablers and see what you can do to try to provide views to the government uh, and to try to mobilize your, your own resources to try to help us to achieve those visions and missions uh, we have set in the roadmap. And if we do all these, I believe that we can really, really uh, realize the theme of today, which is to reset 
uh, and revive Hong Kong for a resilient future. I think at least to the CGO, I think this, uh, um, but, um, <laughs> but we believe it's going to have a, a bright future and a nice weather. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful section we had. Thank you.